The beer gods it's angered. are angered by your insolence. This is all perfectly normal. We invited Cicerone to come in here and walk us through the most favorited beers of whiskey lovers. Is that like Cicero, Cicero? Yeah. Michael, come on over. Michael Cicerone, welcome. Thank you for coming. What are the main categories of beer? Typically, probably just ales and lagers. Ales take up about 80% of beer, so if someone says they like a good ale, they're yeah. probably, it's very general. But uh, lagers, ales, it depends on the different kind of yeast used to ferment the beer. So. Okay. Oh, is that the main difference? Main difference, yeah. I lagers are uh, cold fermented, while ales are more warm fermented. The category that really struck a chord with the Magnificent Bastards, porters and stouts. Where Makes do sense. those Where do those fall into like the, the bigger umbrella terms for uh, beer? Most of those are gonna be uh, ales, typically. You will get some dark lagers, typically Schwartz beers. Yeah. Typically, you're going to see more porters and stouts with uh, like heavy English ale, ale yeast is like the typical one. So. Okay. So I said porters and stouts, and you said makes sense. Mm -hmm. Why does that make sense within a whiskey drinking uh, context? A popular variation of porters and stouts is that you will barrel age them, and guess what? Mm, whiskey barrels. That's true. Yeah. So, so the fifth most voted up specific beer on the list. It was Founders Porter. What is this? A take on a very English style porter, okay. uh, which is gonna be a low hop profile. Typically mm. with most dark beers, you're gonna find that. You're gonna find more noble hops. Noble hops meaning hops that are grown on the other side of the ocean mm. versus American hops. I mean, this beer in general probably really popularized the style, at least here in America. Mm -hmm. And this is one you can find pretty much all across the nation. Founders very well known for it. But this is their porter, just kind of more of a straight up English style, low hop bitterness. Gonna be rich and malty. Let's go ahead and pop these. So Rex is getting a little <laughs> antsy here. All right, the the pouring technique. Oh, well, ah. that's so like that, right? That's, there you go. That is a lot of head. We know how to approach a whiskey. How do we go about, you know, enjoying the beer the, the um, way that's gonna give us the most out of that beer? Typically, with beer, you don't have to let it like sit very long. Just pour it in. Give it a sniff, like you do with mm. most stuff that you're drinking. Yeah. You get those aromas. So a lot of darker beers will have darker malts added to the grain bill. Coffee was the most favored drink besides beer. Yeah. So it's, you're gonna get a lot of coffee yes. notes in a lot of these beers. Like a medium to dark mm -hmm. roast coffee. I'm always confused between porters and stouts. The main difference between them, I would say, is like the amount of ABV. Okay. While there are some stouts that tend to uh, go more heavy on ABV, porters tend don't try to go that high, mm. unless they say imperial porter, which means heavier. Yeah. So this is very deep, dark, rich. There's that bitter, dark quality that is adjacent to a black coffee kind of experience. It is interesting how often I will hear the same words to describe flavors, the same kind of notes in whiskey, in beer, in wine, even cigars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There is a beer that we're gonna try here in a bit that's definitely more on the chocolatey side. Got a little foam there, it's a little citrus. Can I get it? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> mustache That's, print for that. Really <laughs> it's only six and a half percent too. Oh, we got our wow. work cut out for yeah. us there. Is that a big brand? Is it a mid-tier brand? Is uh, it a small? I would say in the craft beer world, Founders is pretty well known. They're one of like the two breweries uh, out of Michigan, most famous other one being Bell's Brewing. Does beer actually go bad in a bottle? Um, it can. What's nice about darker beers is typically they tend to last longer ah. or tend to retain a bit more of that. For most beers, it's around three months. Okay. But with darker beers like this, um, they can be kept, uh, if it's stored properly, up to a year. Oh, nice. nice. So, number four on the list, mm -hmm. Left Hand Milk Stout. Oh, wow. I love this one. I'm so excited that Great Michael, logo too. so excited that Michael brought this. I yeah. have been looking forward to this all week. Bad news, unfortunately. Wait. Uh, I couldn't find any left hand milk stout due to this thing called the pandemic. Um, what? what? They don't have as much distribution as they did. They've had to pull out. But uh, in its place, yes, we have not. a wonderful Texas brewery called Lakewood. Ah, okay. Yeah. And I, this is their temptress. Lakewood Brewing. What made you land on this in place of the left hand milk stout? There is limited out of state beer right now. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the closest to it. Left hand milk stout tends to be a lot lighter, mm. typically in the 5% range. This one is a 9.1%. Mm. Oh. So it's an imperial milk stout. Oh, okay. uh, is that what, when you add the word imperial, is it higher proof? Yes, typically. Ah. In beer, when you hear imperial, no it idea. means big boy. Well, pour it first, but yeah. what defines a milk stout? Milk stout is typically milk is involved? made with lactose. Hence oh, the so there's milk. actual milk involved. <laughs> yeah. Not like, like actual like cow milk. Where does the lactose come from then? Because yeah. I... Uh, lactose sugar, is it from which... Cats? 
<laughs> you can milk anything. With you nipples. can milk a cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cat milk. <laughs> Once again, yeah. very dark. Look at this. You add lactose sugar. It gives mm. uh, more of the yeast to eat up stuff to make more alcohol. In whiskey, there's a moonshiner's trick, which is adding a little sugar to your grains or mm -hmm. whatever to sort of bump up the alcohol of the fermentation run. Yep. So it's sort of like that. In a way, yeah. What's the point at which something becomes imperial? Uh, typically past 8% for most. Okay. So double IPAs, oh. imperial stouts. Mm. Little trick, uh, look imperial for the imperial. Porters, yeah, yeah. 8% mm -hmm. right. and above. I, th I think at least according to the uh, beer judge guidelines, it's 8%. I really like this nose. A very mm. dark, like, uh, like a creamy caramel note. Yeah. That I wasn't getting in the previous one. And I never almost fruit. I almost get like this like molasses smell. Yeah. Like, almost like. It's bourbon barrel aged. They do bourbon barrel aged versions mm. of this beer. Okay. They get a little bit of oakiness, even though it's not there, but that's just, I think, from the booziness of the beer. Holy hell. Whoa! That is. That's candy. That is caramel. Caramel yeah. candy. Mm -hmm. And uh, wow. what's nice about these beers, you can drink them at warmer temperatures. It's yep. often encouraged you drink darker beers mm -hmm. uh, when they're a bit warmed up. Typically, you want to keep your lagers and pilsners the coldest, while as the beer and darker in color, the uh, more you can let it warm up, typically, mm. is what I find. That really is so much sugar. Dark. I don't remember the left hand sugar. being sweet. No, that it's, one's going to be a lot creamier. lighter. It's, it's creamier. creamier. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Typically, you'd find that beer on nitro. You can find this beer on nitro, too. Mm -hmm. When it means put on nitro, the beer is pulled out through a combination of CO2 and nitrogen gas. Yeah. So uh, typically when you see Guinness poured like that, it's almost always on nitro. Same beers like this, um, it adds a creamier mouthfeel to it. Since mm -hmm. the nitrogen is a heavier gas, it takes longer for the bubbles to move their way through the liquid, hence you get like a heavier, creamier mouthfeel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus we got leftovers. Go for it. Oh. Uh, we don't have <laughs> That is good. So coming in at number three, Daniel's yeah, very pleased. one of my favorite beers, yes. Old Rasputin. The Imperial Stout. The Imperial Stout. He never shuts up about I this. I just can't get enough. Do Sometimes it. can't yeah. sleep thinking about, I might have the chance to have it. As a matter of fact, last night, yes. had a hard time getting sleep, Yeah. because I knew today. It's just a fever dream. I was gonna get to try <laughs> Old Rasputin. <laughs> <laughs> um, even more bad news. What? Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> Take a seat. Take a seat. <laughs> Just live in your feelings. It's fine. Uh, Old Raspy is a seasonal beer now. Okay. We do not have Old Raspy right now. This is such a popular thing, even mm. though it's not available year round. It made it up to freaking number three yeah. on this list. So what second rate bullshit did you provide? <laughs> 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 um, we do have some others to try. This is a style I didn't see on the list, so uh, which I also would think dirty bastard. Yeah, dirty bastard. Oh, founders. <laughs> wait. So a lot of nice. people should probably be familiar with this beer if you're a whiskey drinker. Yeah, it's a um, Scotch ale, typically but, made in the land of the Scots, Scotland. <laughs> this is a style that became popular. What makes it an ale of Scotch ale? What are they doing over there to categorize it as this is Scotch ale, or is it just coming uh, from Scotland? Typically, in the malt bill, the biggest thing would be including some peat malt to give that smokiness that- Heat, oh, yeah. really? Mm -hmm. oh. Dirty bastard. What'd you call me? What'd you call me? Ooh, but, that's uh, a nice You'll notice color. this one will have a slightly lighter body. I say slightly, still dark oh. brown. It's almost like a, a nice honey wheat bread. So we say, Pete, this is not the briny, smoky, savory, meaty stuff. Much more subtle than that. I'm almost getting apricot what? in there. A little stone fruit? Yeah. This is a softer nose. It's much more subtle. Oh man, that goes down like butter and cream. Mm. This nice multi backbone. Yeah. You tell me, you say the word peat, and I'm expecting like, eh, but it's not, eh, it's like, eh. Well, if we're looking at the grain bill for this beer, you're I probably I, gonna I appreciate get... how you're just gonna pretend like that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I would say there's probably only a small percentage of it is peat malt. This episode is sponsored by NordVPN. Now, whenever you're on the internet, you're actually giving away a lot more information about yourself than you think. With NordVPN, it allows you to really simply and safely and securely connect to the internet through a virtual private network so you can basically do whatever you need to do without the little beer bitty beer popping on the burr. And the coolest thing, the most practical thing that does for you is all of a sudden these streaming services that you do with the Netflix and the whatnots, you now have access to all of these different countries' content that they won't let you see in your home country. So now you can see everything. The thing that I'm most into right now is this like throwback Canadian, like superhero campy. It's, it's cool. It's good. You should check it out. This is it, Bucket Girl. We finally tracked the thief to what can only be his secret lair. 
You may have found my secret lair, Moochman and Bucket Girl, but nobody escapes the deadline. Say that again. You may have found my secret lair. No, no, after that. What would what, what, you say? Oh, the deadline. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yes, the diddler. What's wrong with that? I diddle people. Do you know what that means, right? You think I don't know what diddling means? I am the diddler himself. Diddle me this, mooch man. What do you think it means? What does diddle mean? Diddle, informal, to cheat or swindle someone so as to deprive them of something. Would you like to hear the next definition? Yep. Vulgar slang, North American, to have sex with or masturbate. Oh my god. Oh my god. I, I, I've built an entire empire on diddling. What am I gonna do? That's super weird and gross, man. Yeah, I mean, how could you not know what diddling means? I just spent primo money getting all of the domains. Diddler.com, diddler.net, diddle.me, diddle.de, diddle.u. My whole brand is ruined. You, Hinchman, why didn't you tell me what diddling meant? Wait, we rob people? Right now, you can get a two-year plan with a huge discount going to NordVPN slash Whiskey Tribe, and then you get two additional months for free. Scratch that. I was super wrong. It's four additional months for free, not two, after the huge discount when you go to NordVPN.com slash Whiskey Tribe. Okay, so coming in at number two, New Holland Drag Dragon's Milk. Uh, stout. Yes, the main difference between this compared to the other ones we tried, it is a bourbon barrel aged stout. <gasps> this is probably one of the most popular ones nationwide. It is also from the state of Michigan, a brewery called uh, New, Holland? New Holland Brewing. Mm -hmm. They're from New Holland, Michigan. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, right? This beer is so popular, in fact, it's the uh, probably the only one that's actually sent to Texas. Dragon's milk, straight from the tit of Daenerys Targaryen herself. <laughs> It is a Burn Barrel Age Imperial Coffee Milk Stout. I guess you really can't so milk anything. This one is actually <laughs> has, this one actually has uh, coffee as part of the beer itself too. So this has a little bit of a. It's not sour. It's not. But there's yeah. But I see what you mean. Yeah. The the darkness that I'm getting tart, from the news. Maybe key lime or something like that. Like a tartness. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. See, mm. that is Come sweet, on. but without feeling like sugar yeah. added. Yeah, yeah. It's just got Ooh. a rich candied walnut sweetness. Oh yeah. Mm. This beer is also 11%, so we're oh. going even higher. We're, we're getting higher. into wine yeah. territory. <sighs> Difference with beers like this is that they spend time in bourbon barrels, mm. uh, often months at a time. Mm -hmm. Some beers will even spend a year yeah. sitting in the barrel, drawing as much as out as they can. What are I the mean, most popular types of barrel finishes in the beer world? Probably, I would say most definitely bourbon, okay. but mm -hmm. there are some beers that have taken on, I mean, tequila barrels, gin barrels. This is more of a nutty mm -hmm. milk chocolate. Walnut, wax, and coffee. Okay. Yeah. The number one on the list, <laughs> by far, mind you. Basically the same number of people voted for this that voted for it in place number two, three, four, and five. Combined. Yeah. I have a guess. That adds up to roughly yeah. the same vote of Guinness. Yeah, absolutely. People love Guinness. So this is an Irish stout. What's nice about the Guinness cans is that they're already nitrogenated in the cans. Mm -hmm. There's a special thing in it. That they invented that. it that keeps the beer nitrogenated. Yeah. I think Guinness, if you're drinking it not on nitro, there's something wrong. Obviously, this is a big brand versus a lot of craft brewers, mm -hmm. right? What sets this apart from what they're all doing, even with the same ingredients? Um, this is the beer that made uh, not just probably stouts in general, but like the Irish stout itself, mm. a very just a prominent, prominent style. Like I said, it's been made since 1759. Is what Could it you in ate hand. that in an American brewery? Could you make that? Yeah. You can. Would it be anywhere close? I think it would be better. Oh, Hot take. If we're, if we're talking about the beers today, this is probably my least favorite one we've tried. What? Wow. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get him out of here. <laughs> Guinness has its place for sure, but I personally don't really drink it much myself mm. because I find it's kind of flat and boring compared to a lot of other stuffs out there. Hi, like, internet. I, know, <laughs> yeah. I still don't have any Guinness in my house. Okay, let's do this. I, I can continue I've talking. Enough crap. Whoa. <laughs> The beer, the beer, the beer hates you. You talk so bad about the beer, blast it it's off angry. in your face. The beer it's got angry. angered by your insolence. 
This is all perfectly normal. This beer goes against conventional pouring techniques. With uh, Guinness, you can basically just straight up, yeah, there you go. Yeah. The cascade Wait. effect you see here is from the, uh, yeah. the nitro. Let me inspect yeah, so this just a little further. Uh, no, uh, Thank you. But we so have more Guinness that uh, we can drink. Fine. Right? Look at the gradient. There's a gradient, Michael. How could you not love this? Are you dead inside? Maybe, a little bit. <laughs> when you work at the biggest craft beer bar in Texas, you try a lot of beer. So right. somebody comes in and orders that a Guinness. Sense. When they, yeah. If they order a Guinness, do you judge them? A little bit. I just tell them we have it in the can, we don't have it on draft. Well, we don't carry any, really any domestic beer, so they ask for a Bud Light, and I'm like, well, there's a water station right over there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit! That's another. I get that it's soft and, and not overly complex, and not a lot of drama, and mostly creamy and, and if chocolate. And simplicity, uh, left-hand milk stat would definitely be more along these lines. Yeah, see, that's um, why I like... Especially if you're able to get in, an, in a can like this. It is interesting how my beer preferences don't parallel my whiskey preferences. With whiskey, I like some drama, and you throw your weight around, and I want like all types of complicated yeah. things happening. With beer, I just want it simple, accessible, easy, relaxed, enjoyable. This has that in space. Yeah. But I can't imagine that if I lived in beer, mm -hmm. I would want to really start exploring and do more interesting, unique, complicated things. See, that's actually, I'm glad we, re we are revisiting this because that's actually really nice. It's simple. Yeah. I'm what? not just saying that what? because I, uh, we saved, uh, we saved there's you. a lot of backpedaling that's about to happen here. Your soul. After you've gone to the far end of the spectrum of drama, you're better equipped to experience and appreciate the simpler right. things. I've definitely found that, you know, working at a place where you have dozens of options, sometimes simplicity is what you prefer. You just come back and you just want something more simple, and not homie. like the crazy, hazy IPAs, you know. Yeah. All right, can I pour All you right. a whiskey? Because I've got a yeah, whiskey. Yeah, let's do it. Today, we are unbarreling and bottling a bourbon Ooh. finished in a stout barrel. It's not even labeled because nice. this is a yeah. barrel sample. This was a stout cast from Occupy. Yep, Ocupon. Brewing in Dripping Springs. Mmm. Oh. Cask strength. 75 corn, 21 rye, 4% malted barley. Oh. This one on your left is oh. before the stout cask. Wait, the wait, one on your right wait, is wait. after. We're dialing in the technique here. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> what the bourbon originally always brings to this without the stout cask is this sort of orange brown sugar and a slight oaky note. I definitely prefer the. Uh, the, the stout finish? Drink. Yeah. Why? It just seems to linger a bit longer mm. compared to just the, the, the neutral oak. Just so you know, we've tried samples of this over the last year. Mm -hmm. At every point I was like, ah, damn it. We didn't get that amazing thing we got last time. Yeah. This is good. Just took the better part of a year. Yeah, it just Ooh. took a lot longer this time. You all right there? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> now it is tradition to combine them and shoot it. Oh. <laughs> ah. 